In this video, I'm going to take a look at uh, John C. Hull's example for um, valued risk. And we're going to look at the fourth edition. And we're looking at download uh, model building calculations for fourth edition. And we can open that up. And in this particular spreadsheet, um, there is a set of data for the Dow Jones industri Industrial Average, the FTSE 100, CAC Caront, and Nikkei 225. Um, and there are 500 days of data. Uh, so we have daily observations for each of the indices. We work out the returns, and from the returns, uh, John uh, Hull has estimated uh, covariances, um, a variance covariance matrix, in fact, and with a particular set of then alphas or weights attached to each of the assets uh, the portfolio variances worked out the portfolio standard deviation and the one day var so that's what we'd like to replicate and verify that these results are consistent with the methodology i used before so in a previous example um I worked out using um, an example developed by Simon Beninga using uh, prices he worked out uh, daily returns excess returns and then a variance covariance matrix so here we're going to, to use the same approach as Simon Beninga and then work out a portfolio variance using this uh, relationship and then from that work out a value at risk okay and verify that the results are consistent with the results illustrated by John C. Hull's uh, spreadsheet so we go back into the spreadsheet downloadable from um, this address okay so the Rotman uh, University of Toronto Canada and it's the whole page we look at his numbers okay so we open up and let's just copy everything that's in the spreadsheet paste the values are there and uh, we look at the returns now what are the returns the returns essentially um are not uh, continuously compounded returns they're actually discrete returns so we take each daily observation and we take the difference between the two prices and divide by the previous day. Take the difference between the two prices and divide by the previous day. And in a decimal form, we work out the returns. Okay. And then we know the results because we have them here. But we just try to verify using the approach suggested by Simon Beninga. So we'll insert some additional cells. So we at least have four and probably should go five so insert again and then the approach developed by Simon Beninga um, in his approach he gets the returns okay we have those although in this instance the returns were worked out using natural logarithm and then the or if you like the log difference we took the ratio of the two days asset prices and then took the natural logarithm of the ratio and that gives you a continuously compounded return and from that he worked out an average a standard deviation and a variance so we'll do something similar here okay and what we want to do is verify the results that that are in the hull worksheet so we come down a number of cells here and we'll say insert 
and then we'll say okay um let's get might like to make a little bit of space here so we'll take these values again copy and paste and in this instance we're going to look at um, the average of those returns to start off with so okay let's take the mean and the mean is equal to just the average and we'll open bracket so average open bracket and we'll take the first and we'll come down to the end and return and that's the average return and then we pull across and then we work work out the standard deviation now we could express these perhaps leave them general so let's so we'll just take as a number and we avoid the scientific notation okay so we get two five nine nine and so on okay so that's our average values then to take the uh, variance okay so we could use var dot p and it's the variance population so if we just look at that for a second so there dot p equal to and open bracket and again the same range of numbers is here and we come back and we can pull that across and the var p is the variance but it is the variance where we divide by n as opposed to divide by n minus one so uh, for small sample size normally the standard deviation is adjusted by dividing by n minus one so we take the the difference between the mean the observation square divided by n minus one for sample variance but for population variance okay we use this is our formula x minus x bar squared sum divided by n as opposed to n minus one okay and then for standard deviation same again standard deviation well we can just take the square root or we can go standard deviation p and then same as the cells and drag across when done okay close brackets and go back up okay and we pull that across okay okay now in the Beninga example we worked out excess return so once we worked out the average the standard deviation and the variance we then estimated the excess returns and from that then we we use this expression we took those excess returns we transposed them multiplied and excess returns and we obtained the variance covariance matrix okay so that's what we we plan to use here so again we can take this uh, copy these headings and paste and we can put here excess returns and we want to take the difference so this cell minus uh, the mean and we'll f for that and again equal to this cell minus its mean and f for that to lock the cell reference we'll try that again so this cell minus this cell here 
and F4. And again, the cell minus the CAC 40, average return. And again, the Nikkei 225. So we take each of the observations and we subtract away its mean return. And we can take each of the four and pull each of these down. So in, a, in essence, what we're estimating here is the excess returns over the entire period of the 500 days of returns. Okay, so what's left then is to work out. Okay, so we can, I suppose we can take this out. We can delete and remove the formatting. So no borders. And we can try to include a workout as we had done before this uh, variance covariance uh, matrix. Okay, so from the excess returns, we worked out the variance covariance matrix. Okay, so let's go back in and look at our example again. Okay, so to get the variance covariance matrix, variance covariance matrix. All we need to do, so let's just insert, insert. What we can do is we can say, okay, let's take, so equal to M, mult, open bracket, transpose, transpose, open bracket. So we take the transpose of the excess returns. Okay, we come back. We multiply by the same set of excess returns again. So we can just copy this. Copy and paste. And then we divide that matrix by the number of observations. So we don't divide by n minus 1, we divide by n. So we can say count, open bracket, c-o-u-n-t, open bracket, and we can go n, or we can just take It's uh, n to n 510. Okay, and because this is an array, it's control shift enter. And we need, it's a variance covariance, so it's a 4 by 4. And we do that again, control shift enter. And we get a variance covariance matrix. And now we, we need to verify, is this consistent with the values down below? Okay, so this is the variance covariance matrix set out by um, John C. Hall. Let's just compare the values. Um, so we could bring up a couple of these cells. So let's just delete up, delete, and shift cells up. And we'll make the comparison. So this is uh, the values obtained by John C. Hull. So for let's copy, paste. Okay, so the variance of the Dow Jones, what's on the diagonal? It's the variances. And off diagonal is the covariances. And these values for the variances correspond with John C. Hull's values. Okay, other than perhaps uh, some rounding. And in the next video, we'll finish uh, the value risk calculation as set out by John.